3D rotating text effect. Sweet! Let's build us one of those real quick. And I'll kind of set this up for you. Peter at callouts.com. I'm talking with Peter. In fact, he is one of the members of my LinkedIn Camtasia group. If you guys um, aren't aware of this, I have a Camtasia users group on LinkedIn, and we've got like 1,700 people in there. <laughs> in fact, the TechSmith folks kind of drop by periodically. There are a few people that uh, are pretty much looking out for everybody here. Troy Stein, he used to be team lead for Camtasia itself, but now he's kind of moved up. Troy Stein and a bunch of the engineers actually monitor this particular group because it's I've, I've had this thing since, gosh, I don't know, 2008 in one way, shape, or form. It's a fairly active group. It's a little resource for you if you haven't checked anything like that out. So Peter is in there, and he kind of gave a freebie away. Here, it's actually this Star Wars template. So it's basically scrolling text that it's like Star Wars, you know, the intro thing. Uh, and that is on the free stuff that you get here. I'm not going to get into that very much, but what I am going to talk about is this new one that he has. It's called Camtasia 3D Animation. This is kind of nice. So I'll let this roll a little bit, and then we're going to reverse engineer it. Arguably, it's kind of cool. <laughs> What the, the scoop is here is that we can do these kinds of animations in Camtasia, but they don't really look 3D. So let's see if we can kind of recreate something here and kind of rip Peter off a little bit, at least as far as the tactic goes. So I'm going to just kind of wing this. I think I have a good idea how this works, so let's try it. Let's go to the callouts. And I'm going to add a callout, make it a text callout. We'll take the fades off of it. And I think what I want to do is I kind of want it to get it to look like what I want it to look like. So let's work on that a little bit. I want it to be white. And I think I want like a nice bold font. So let's try something like... Uh, impact maybe and I want it to be kinda big oh I don't know let's take this to like 120 or something and uh, keep the text simple in Camtasia's incredibly weak text editor alright uh, I think I want that even bigger 160 boom okay we'll try that so if that's what I want the text to look like Here's kind of how we're going to roll this. I'm going to copy this. Copy. And I like to use hotkeys, so I would just use the Control C. Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste. Paste. Three, five, six, seven, eight. So let's see, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight all right now what I'm going to do is go to the first one here and go to visual properties okay so this one I'm gonna kinda leave everything the same on um, the next one I'm going to change the z-axis of position to minus something kinda small uh, like three. The Z moves it in and out or forward and backward. I explained that so you would know that on the second one here what I want to do is bring this forward just like three pixels or three I think it's pixels. I assume it's pixels. So I'm going to bring this copy forward like just a little bit. <laughs> And then I'm going to go to the next one, and I'm going to bring it ahead three more, which means that I have to bring it minus six. Uh, actually, I'm probably pushing it back, not bringing it forward, sorry. So that was 
six, so let's go three more, let's go nine, let's go minus twelve, let's go minus fifteen, minus eighteen, and minus twenty-one. Right? So again, if you think of what we've done there is we started off with a text at a certain point in 3D space, then I pushed it back three pixels, pushed this one back three more, and hopefully what will happen, <laughs> let me just, uh, let's select all these now and group them, and God willing and the crick don't rise, let's add an animation here. Uh, let's see, let's add an animation and let's just kind of start screwing around with some stuff. So let's twist her this way and I'm gonna make this bigger. Let's twist him that way. Let's twist it that way. So now we should start to see a little bit of kind of 3D action. Uh, let's try another little trick. First of all, I'm going to change the background. It doesn't stand out real well on black. Let's try it on a blue. There we go. So you can see that now it has some thickness to it. If I wanted it to be thicker, I would just add more layers of text. It seems like 8 kind of gets us in the game. But let's try another little thing here. I'm going to take my first one and I'm going to change the text color to something like red. And I'm going to change my last one to red also. And this is mostly for demonstration purposes so we can kind of see, you know, what our effect looks like a little better. So let's, there we go, right? But that could be an interesting effect to go for. So I stacked all these layers, you know, on top of each other. The first top layer is red, and the bottom one you can kind of see is also red. Uh, and yeah, so now I have this kind of funky animation here. And I don't know, let's make it a little wilder even. Now, one thing you can do is use like the hotkeys. I'm going to try this, control shift. and squirrel it around a little bit. <laughs> Instead of uh, manipulating all the buttons and stuff. This kind of works, but it's mostly just to show you that, yeah, that is kind of 3D-ish. It's going to be a screwy animation for sure, but... So let me undo that. And we'll go back to visual properties and try something a little more sane. When it comes to manipulating these, instead of the spinner buttons, you can also use the arrow keys. So that's what I kind of do most of the time. If you use the control shift hot key, you notice things get a little squirrely. Uh, so I talked about that in a session before. So let's do that and let's just play with it. So I'm going to like spin this guy all the way around and let's uh, play with this a little bit. Nice. Did you add a shadow to the bottom layer? Asked Susan. Uh, I don't think I did, Susan. Let's double check. I think that might be maybe even a good thing to do though. So let's look at the bottom layer and effects. Yeah, it looks like there is a shadow on the bottom. So if I take that off, because you can put a shadow here also. Uh, you know what, I might have to play with that a little bit. I'm not exactly sure. I assume it, it came from the effects, but with text it's a little bit weird also. But the shadow effect, I think by default Susan have sh had shadows. When I Before I duplicated it all, you would want to either apply the, a shadow effect or not apply a shadow effect. You notice if I go here and I add a new callout, it's kind of going to be the last one that I used. 
So, yeah, in the last text callout I created, whenever I created one, must have had a shadow on it. But, I, you know, I think it actually kind of helps to sell the thing and popping it out a little bit. Yeah, so. Uh, so that's kind of a way to engineer a bit of a 3D action. One other thing I can think of that probably might be an issue too, but I haven't tested, is when you preview this, if you do a lot of these in a single project, your preview is probably going to be kind of slow. Because if you think about it, there's a lot of stuff kind of going on. Or in other words, Camtasia's having to manipulate a lot of objects. Uh, this one's pretty thick. Let's just crack this down a little bit. Let's like remove like four of them. So see, that'll be thinner. I wonder how many you could actually do. Yeah, I mean, you can get a little pseudo 3D effect with just a couple layers. You can get pretty chunky if you want. Boom, test. Whee! Alright, so that's a fun little effect.